I was having so much fun. Let the fun continue. Good morning, Good morning. everyone. Welcome to Restoration Church, the church that restores truth back to all. Um, today, I've got a tough subject. I'm going to try to explain evil. All right. I'm not going to try to explain all the evil. That would take me all day. That would be a series so long. But, um, you know, I think that there are a lot of things going on in the world around us. I'm not there yet, sister. There's a lot of things in the world that are going around us, and, uh, and I want everyone to remember that they serve a good God, a loving God, and we have him as our Father. Now let's pray for the offerings and for this service and possibly for Karen. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for the offerings today. We ask that you would bless them and that you would multiply them. And Father God, we just want to ask that those who are not able to give, that you would give them the funds, that you would give them the ability to, to do, to be, uh, well, to do what you asked to do. <laughs> um, obedience. Thank you, Father. Um, today we just pray for the service, Father God, I ask that it would be you who speaks through me and the Holy Spirit that takes over, that takes charge. Let it be your words, not mine, that come out today. And I thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh yeah, and bless Karen. Okay. Um, go to Matthew 6.13. I think we all know this. It's part of the Lord's prayer. It's what the, uh, the Lord told the, how, taught the disciples how to pray. But it says, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Actually, the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So who is the evil one? That's the devil, the one who kills, steals, and destroys. But we serve a God who delivers us from all of the wiles of the devil. Paul calls them wiles, actually schemes. And he has so many of them. And, you know, you only need to turn on the news today to, you know, to see the insanity that's happening in our in our streets today, what's happening with our youth. Uh, these things mainly happen in, well, liberal-run cities. Um, but no one's safe anymore. It's coming. There's a major problem with the youth of our country. It started in the universities, but now it's begun taking control of our K through 12 schools. And it's come from liberal professors teaching liberal teachers what it is to teach, what they're supposed to say and do. It's getting scary, but, well, we don't have to be scared. We serve a good God. The problem is that, you know, since our children are ignorant of the things of God, and a lot of children are very ignorant of the things of God because their parents have left them that way, because so many parents think that it's so cool to just let their own, ch let their child decide you know, if they're going to believe in God or not. Stupidity. <sighs> oh, anyway. Uh, well, you think about it. You know, they don't know about God, so they don't know that there's an existence of heaven or hell. So they think that this life is all that there is. And so why not live like a, like a demon? Why not do what you want to do while you're alive? So when you're dead... Maybe somebody will remember you. And I think that's what they're all worried about. Who's going to remember me when I die? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> but I think, you know, um, well, anyway. 
you know, the kids today, they, they do whatever they feel is right. And a lot of people are the same way. They just do what they feel is right because, you know, it's their truth. And that since there's no absolute truth, their truth is, is the real truth. It's, you know, it's, well, it's, it's so good. <laughs> And that's what destroys, that is exactly what destroys a civilization. You know, a parent who refuses their child about the absolute truth and one, the main absolute truth that there is a God and that he is watching and that he does have power um, to, well, let you live or die. You think about a God and has a switch. He can flip and you're... <laughs> if he so chose. But see, God doesn't do that because we have a good God who wants us to live and come to him no matter how much hell you raise as a child. But people are giving their children license to sin. And they're doing it the children are doing it in any way that they feel led to do it. And let's face it, kids are, well, they're not exactly bright. That's, you know, why, you know, their brains are still forming. They don't know anything. That's why you're supposed to teach them. You're not supposed to, you know, let them run wild in the streets or even worse, get, their, get all their knowledge from television or whatever's on their computers. And now, even if kids hurt other people, it's not the kid's fault, it's the victim's. It's like, well, if a black kid hits a white person, well, it's because they were white. That's not a good excuse. You see, what we're witnessing is a social experiment that has gone horribly, terribly wrong. And it was started by educators. And I'm gonna, I want to read to you part of a, you know, it's part of a speech that was given by um, Arthur Schlesinger. He was an American historian. He has a, a social critic. He was actually a, a liberal historian, if you can believe that, if they, they needed one. Um, and, you know, he worked for President Kennedy, so you'd think he'd be better than this, but... <laughs> This is what he, this is a speech he gave uh, at the induction of the president at Brown University in 1989. It says, the mystic prophets of the absolute cannot save us, meaning God or the Bible or any other God for that matter. It says, Sustain, sustained by our history and traditions, we must save ourselves at whatever risk of heresy or blasphemy. We can find solace in the memorable representation of the human struggle against the absolute and the finest scene in uh, the greatest of American novels. And I refer, of course, to the scene when Huckleberry Finn decides that the plain hand of providence, meaning God, requires him to tell Miss Watson where her runaway slave Jim is to be found. So Huck writes his letter of betrayal to Miss Watson and feels all washed clean of sin for now. He sits there for a while thinking how good it was all this happened so and how near I come to being lost and going to hell. Then Huck begins to think about Jim and the rush of the great river and the talking and the singing and the laughing and the friendship. Then I happen to look around and see that paper. I took it up, held it in my hand. I was a trembling because I'd got to decide forever betwixt two things and I knowed it. <laughs> Sorry, I, Huck always makes me laugh. I studied a minute, sort of holding my breath. And then I said to myself, all right then, I'll go to hell and tore it up. That, if I may say so, is what America is all about. And that, my friends, is what I say is well, duty. <laughs> that is not what America is all about. That is what a liberal America is all about. Never mind that slavery being wrong in God's eyes was in itself an absolute truth. He kind of missed that part, didn't he? 
And then that guy spewed out a philosophy that he got a, from a book of fiction written by Mark Twain. And educators have been following his lead ever since. Liberal teachers and professors are now teaching your children that there are no absolutes in this world. But everyone knows in their hearts that that isn't true. Most people know this in their hearts. If they don't, then those people are what we call sociopaths. And I think we're bringing up a generation of sociopaths who don't care about anybody else. They only care about themselves. That's why you see kids running around fighting all the time or just sucker punching somebody, coming up behind somebody and hitting them in the back of the head with a brick. Or you think about, you know, the, the people in New York City, it's not even safe to go to the subway or wait for the train because there's people that go down into the subway and when you're not looking, they push you on the tracks or worse, in front of a train. They don't care. They have no empathy. They have no feeling for anybody else. And I have no idea how that makes them feel good about themselves. I'm sorry. Jesus told his followers in Luke 17 that it would be better to be thrown into the sea with a millstone hung around your neck than to cause one of these little ones to fall into sin. Well, we have a lot of people who are causing the little ones to sin right now, don't we? And whether or not they believe in God, that doesn't really matter, does it? Because in the end, they will see God and they will wish for that millstone around the neck. Ravi Zacharias, he was a, what I call a true intellectual, wrote, the ultimate test of any civilization is what we do with our children. Well, what are we doing with our children? You know, women believe that it's their choice to abort a baby in the womb, and now in some states, even out of the womb because, well, they don't want it <laughs> or they don't feel it's a real person. And they scream, you know, you're taking health, women's health away if you ban abortions. I don't know how that's taking women's health away. It's always, you know, my body, my choice, unless of course it has to do with the vaccine, in which case it's your body, our choice. But you have to be intentionally ignorant to believe, you know, to believe that. I mean, the baby inside you is not part of your body. It's a totally different human being. So if you kill another human being, that is what? It's murder. You know, if it wasn't murder, why do they charge, you know, people with two murders when they kill a pregnant woman? You know, it's an oxymoron. Well, no, it's not that. I don't know. You should call that. It's a, it's, I don't know. <laughs> um, the thing is, people, people have a choice. It is your body, your choice. Your choice is not to have sex, especially since you know the consequences of having sex is that you could get pregnant and you could have a baby. So, I mean, I'm sorry, but abortion is the murder of a tiny human being, a little baby. And the person who actually commits that murder, a doctor, is sick. That is a sick person. Kind of like that one doctor who had all those fetuses in his house. That is a very sick, sick person. And, and another thing, why did these people always get up in arms when there's a school shooting and they want to scream and shout about innocent children dying? Aren't those the same people who advocate for the murder of babies? I'm sorry, but the insanity of this global society that, you know, the elite think is the way. I love that. It's the way. <laughs> it's illogical and it lacks all reason. 
And so many people are going along with it. Because they saw it in a movie. <laughs> people get way too much from their, their, their social media and movies. And of course, if you watch movies, you know that robots are going to take over the world and kill everybody. So they're going to go ahead and make them. <laughs> <laughs> no reason, no, <laughs> no wisdom whatsoever. Go to Jeremiah 4.22. It says, my children, my people are foolish. They have not known me. They are silly children and they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. You think about it, God's calling on calling people like this silly little children. You know, they don't believe in God because um, well, they're just silly children who don't believe in God. <laughs> they have, uh, and because of that, you know, they're very good. In fact, they're great at sinning. But they have no idea what it means to do good. And that's scary. And you think that's the, that's the utopia that the elite have in mind for everyone, but of course them. And they want your, your, your children to, to be against you and to turn on you uh, whenever they ask them to. It was kind of like with that uh, whole vaccine thing. They're uh, like calling on the children to, uh, to turn in their parents if they, you know, didn't get vaccinated. And, and now those parents are probably having heart attacks. Isaiah 3.12 says, As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Oh, my people, those who lead you cause you to err and destroy the ways of your past. You know, our leaders from the top to the bottom want sin to rule over righteousness. And we've noticed that in the past, well, a couple of different administrations. But this one particularly has accelerated the, the sin of of our country and has destroyed, well, everything in this country. And you know, those people that have been plopping their kids down in front of the TV or, you know, the iPad or some other gadget, they get from their kids exactly what they put into them. And a lot of them, well, they don't get anything from them because they don't put anything into them. They let other people raise their children teachers, the television, social media people. Your children are being taught, taught about sexuality from, from sexual deviants like Disney. Sickening. And then they, want, they think that having drag queens dance for your children. If you take your kid to a drag queen show and have the drag queen stick in his butt in her face or his face, you are a sick human being. If you don't get up and smack the... Okay. I'll get off that subject. Think about the social media influencers who, who have zero world experience, but they're telling your children how to live, what to wear, you know, how to talk. You know, the, the, the television has has been tell, you know, telling children, has been showing children that they're you know, smarter than, than their parents for so long, and especially the fathers. You know, the father, if you ever watch a television show, the father's the idiot. You know, it's just, you know, that's the way it is. Oh, that is so funny. You know, the child is so smart and the father's a moron. And that's the way children teach, no, train, t oh, well, Treat, thank you. <laughs> That's the way children treat their parents because they think it's what the way it's supposed to be. And parents are like, oh, isn't that cute? Until they go to other people's houses and they don't. And they, they want to want to see your children ever again. You know, that's, 
It's basically, this, that's the end of a society. When they let these things happen, when they let them go haywire like that. I mean, are, I don't think we're ever going to get to the AI stuff. I don't think we have to worry about robots killing us. The robots are just going to be there and say, well, I'm better to do. <laughs> Maybe they'll just bury you. Uh, this is what it comes down to, all right? Either you believe Christ came and died for your sins and came back to life on the third day and is alive today, or you just go to church, you know, to listen to music and socialize and have a good time. We're getting to that time in the Bible, though, that warned us, the Bible, that, well, we're getting to the time in the Bible when the Bible warned us, goodness gracious, tongue twistered myself, the Bible's warned us about, you know? This is prophecy coming to life. And there's going to be a great tribulation that's coming. And you think things are tough now when billions, billions of people start dying, not just a thousand, a hundred thousand or a million, billions at once. A third of the population dies at once. People are going to freak. That is what the tribulation is all about. But we don't have to be there. We know as Christ followers that, you know, we don't have to endure that. But instead, you know, we've been invited to the marriage festival, feast, well, festival of the Lamb. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather be partying with Jesus than be here doing, you know, watching people die all the time. You know, I was going to say that the Antichrist is Alexander Soros, but I think we'll find that out later. To deny Christ is a death sentence that carries on for eternity. So I'd rather die refusing to deny Christ than to live a few more miserable years in this world. And I know all of you would too. And what did Jesus say about fearing men anyway? In Matthew 10, 28. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That's right. You better fear God because he can destroy you eternally over and over again. And a mere man, can, what can he do? He can only end your life once. You don't want to keep dying. <laughs> so all we have to do is just remain strong, you know. Keep moving forward. Keep doing what Christ told us to do. That's all we have to do in order to get to that, that, that marriage feast of the Lamb. You know, I don't know, you know, nobody really knows if there's a pre-tribulation rapture, which I believe that there is. You know, I, I didn't even know there was such a thing as a mid-tribulation rapture or a post-tribulation rapture until well, somebody brought it up. But, you know, I don't think Jesus would let his church go through that kind of, well, torture. There are people who are going to come to Christ after, during the rapture, after we're gone. But, you know, um, they're going to have to wait for Jesus to come back on that white horse. And we'll be there with him. And as like I said, we'll be long gone during, before the second coming of Jesus anyway. The church is going to live on forever. And we're going to live on in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, so much better than living on day after day, suffering in the same place where the devil is doing the same thing, suffering. The devil's not going to be in charge of hell. That's insane. The devil's going to be in charge of suffering because what he did to God was unmentionable. Go to Micah 7, 8, please. Nah, I like this scripture. It says, do not rejoice over me, my enemy. 
When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. It's that simple. With the Lord at your side, there is no thing uh, or no person who can harm you or keep you, well, in darkness. You know, remember when you watch the news or read it or whatever you do to get your news, that the kingdom of darkness is in charge of the media. The kingdom of darkness is in charge of all the information that most of these people put out. Don't fall for, you know, anyone telling you things that elicit or bring up such uh, uh, emotions as fear or anger. There's no reason to fear or be angry. It's like there's no reason for us to be in wars that we don't have any reason, to, we have no part of. But those people are paid to make you angry. Those people are paid to get, make you fearful. They're paid to make you want to watch more and more and more of their news. And the only way they can do that is through negative uh, emotions. You think someone's going to come on there and tell you good stuff? And you're going to come back for more? People are generally, they, they love negativity. I don't understand why. You know, when those basic, uh, I don't know how you say it, uh, you know, we are part animal. And so that part animal in us that, you know, we have that fight or flight thing, but then we, yeah, that's exactly it. We either fear it or we get angry and want to kill it. That is a human being. So the news knows that. So they know if they say something about Putin, you know, He's doing this. He's killing babies and uh, using them for dinner. So <laughs> you immediately want to go kill him. <laughs> that would be your response, unless you're a liberal, in which case you would think, yeah, it sounds all right. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to be in trouble, aren't I? <laughs> anyway, uh, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He just told me to shut up, so... <laughs> Because uh, he's going to tell you what to believe and what not to believe. Because you know what? Only truth comes from God. Only truth comes from the throne of God. You have to, to remember that. And you have to ask God. You have to ask that Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you. Is this something that I should be taking into my heart? Or is this something I should be casting out? Or casting aside. And most of it's just a bunch of garbage you don't need. Trust me. Now, I think every, almost everyone knows the, the words of John 3.16. That, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That, uh, you know, whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But, you know, how many people know the next verse or verses besides Doug? pastor uh, <laughs> see i'd guess you know probably not that many people because they like to stop there when you go to the you, know, you see the football games and they got john 316 written all over them <laughs> there's more to it john 317 says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved Jesus didn't come into this world to destroy it. He came into this world so that as many people who would believe in him could be saved and have eternal life with him. It's something that people have such trouble with. Go to John 3, 18. It says, he who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. People have such trouble believing that Jesus is the son of God. They have such trouble believing that Jesus died and came back to life and that he's alive today. 
They don't know Jesus because they've never met Jesus. And it's so easy. He's always there. He's always knocking. He says, I'm always at the door knocking. Just answer it. He's there waiting on the other side. He's alive. He will be with you forever once you call on him. And think about it. The only reason Jesus came to the earth is because God so loved the world. You know, you don't, uh, you don't to hate your creation. You love your creation even before it's created. And that's the way God is. And those who truly believe know there is only one way to God. And that's through Jesus Christ, his son. I'm sorry, but, you know, every other way is kind of a, is a counterfeit and, and it's subject to fail. Jesus said, you know, you can come in through the sheep gate or you can, you know, try to jump the fence. But either any other way, you're not going to get in. You know, those poor people are putting their hope in Buddha or Muhammad. You know, they're going to be terribly disappointed, especially the, 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 the Islam, Islamic people that kill them, you know, blow themselves up, think they're going to get 72 virgins. I don't, it's not going to work out that way. Or they'll go to hell and get 72 not so virgin virgins. <laughs> uh, you know, Oh, I, my gosh, if you truly believe in one of the gods of the Hindus, you're not only going to be confused, you're, you're well, you're, you're not going to, you're not going to make it either. They got thousands of gods. And none of them will get you to heaven. They will help you in your yoga. Only Christ can save you from this world and the world to come. Think about that. Only Christ So if you haven't taken Christ, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can do it now or whenever. But I think the, the faster you do it, the better off you're going to be, especially when you come into this tribulation period or the, the time that we're in right now. I think above all things, that knowing Jesus Christ and knowing that God loves you so much should be enough for you to, to, to believe. Just believe that Jesus came because God loved you, that Jesus came so that you would be, well, you could be saved and live with them for eternity. Heaven is not floating around on a cloud playing a harp. Even though floating around on a cloud kind of sounds good on my back, but that's going to be totally different because thank God we're going to get a glorified body. And then you'll be able to do all the things that Jesus did, like pop in in the middle of a crowd and scare them. <laughs> Heaven's going to be fun. Hell, on the other hand, is not going to be fun. There's not going to be music. There's not going to be light. There's not going to be love. There's not going to be laughter. There will be no peace. There will be no joy. Because you have denied God, God will take himself away. And that is hell. Is living without God. Or any of the things of God. No light. Only darkness. So praise the Lord, we have Jesus Christ. And I thank Jesus every day for what he's done. And I, I think we should pray right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for the, this day. I thank you for your word. And I ask your forgiveness for my ad living. And Father, please... Please touch those, those who are waiting, who, who, are, who are just taking, who, who, 
who are on the edge of taking Jesus as their Lord and Savior, who are just, they're almost there, God, but they just need to take that step. Believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in the Lord. Ask Jesus to come into your heart and believe with all your heart and all your mind that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus came, that Jesus lived and died for you, and that Jesus is alive right now. And that's why you can call on Jesus. That's why you can ask Jesus to come into your heart, because Jesus is alive. He's waiting. He's there. He's knocking. And we thank you, Father, that you've given those the chance. You've given them a chance still to make that choice. Yes, it is your life and your choice, but your life does not end with this world. There is more, and you can either spend it suffering or not. So take Jesus, and we thank you, God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the blessings that you have given to each and every one of us. We thank you that you love us so much. And we praise you and we worship you, Father God, because we love you. We love you because you first loved us. And we thank you, God. And we ask that you bless these people today as they drive home, Father, that you would give them safety and keep Mary from running into things. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen.